Well, good morning, Jim. I was actually, when you texted me to see if I wanted to come on, I was actually listening to the debate. Uh, very interested, actually, about the various views about it, which I think probably represent what everyone else is thinking. You know, some people think Ronaldo shouldn't be doing this. He's gone too far. Other people like Martin, I think, understand that kind of thinking by someone of that elite quality at this stage of his career. Well, well, we're going to get to it. We'll get to some of the nuts and bolts of it in a second. Simon's with me, so too, as you rightly say, Martin Keown. I mean, I have to say, Piers, congratulations on it. I mean, you brought us Donald Trump, more recently Kanye West. Is this your biggest scoop yet, do you think? I, I think it is, actually. I think in terms of the impact it's had, I mean, the idea that in the week before a World Cup starts, there's really been only one story in town and it's been this interview and the amount that it's been followed up around the world i mean i've had calls from literally like 50 countries for, for interviews so you're very lucky to have me jim just to put that on the record <laughs> we are um, in, no we are no, indeed I do, <laughs> no, I, do, I do i do i do feel i feel in terms of all the the metrics you would use for an interview and also because i really like cristiano and i think that He's been waiting to have his say. Sure. And he, cer he certainly has no regrets about anything he said. So he's got no regrets. Piers, as you're speaking to myself, to Simon, to Martin, and I'm delighted to tell you a massive audience, we're delighted with the audience we get on this show. Oh. Manchester United have just said this. Manchester United has this morning initiated appropriate steps in response to Cristiano Ronaldo's recent media interview. That's you, Pierce. We will not yeah. be making further comment until this process reaches its conclusion. What do you think those uh, appropriate steps are that they're initiating? Well, I think it's highly unlikely he'll be going back to Manchester United. I think he knew when he did this interview it would be highly unlikely uh, for all the reasons he stated in the interview. So I think we're probably heading to a, a divorce between Ronaldo and United. Do you think, Pierce, that he's brought the club into disrepute? No, I think the club has been in disrepute for a long time. And Cristiano Ronaldo came back last season. He scored 24 goals. And just to remind everyone, he scored one more goal in the Premier League last season than Harry Kane, who by common consent is one of the top three or four strikers in the world. He also scored six goals in the Champions League. And as he pointed out last night, you don't go from that guy to somebody who can't play football in three months. He says he's, he hasn't spoken to the, the Glazers. Do you feel as it's the Glazers and it's the football club, peers that pays him reportedly 400 grand a week, do you feel he's disrespected the club and the owners? Well, I just think, look, they've shown him no respect, have they? And I think the issue with Ten Hag, I thought you were you were really knuckling in, I think, on the, the key thing behind the disrespect that he feels with the, the two incidents, both at the Manchester City game and then the Tottenham game. In the first one, Ten Hag doesn't bring him on uh, at all, out of respect, he says. Doesn't want to bring him on towards the end of a game out of respect for everything he's done for the game. And then literally the next game, they're winning 2-0. There is no reason on God's earth to bring on Cristiano Ronaldo. And with three minutes to go, he tells him to come on, which is completely contradictory to the position Ten Hag took in the Man City game. And I think at that point, Ronaldo just felt there'd been a lot of things going on behind the scenes, not least the staggering revelation that senior executives at the club had doubted his word when his daughter, who had survived this tragedy three months earlier, was now in hospital with bronchitis for a week that he was doubted by his own club. That really hurt and upset him. But I think also he felt his coach was just mucking him around and trying to score points with him and completely contradicting himself game by game. Pierce, did he tell you specifically who this senior executive was who reportedly doubted him? In the well, I think, he said, I, th I think he alluded to several of them. And I think you know, this goes right to the top of Manchester United, not the Glazers. So I think it doesn't take a genius to work out who he's talking about. It's the people who run the club. And, I, and he's pretty straightforward <laughs> about that. I mean, I think you can, you can join the dots. But I think the, but the key thing for Ronaldo, I think, is this has been coming for a while. He said in August he was going to go on the record. And Gary Neville, who's been quite critical of him for doing it, actually tweeted back in August urging Ronaldo to go public and to have his say. So he did, and now he gets criticised for it. Now, he knew he'd be criticised for it, but what's interesting to me is there's definitely been a change in public mood towards it after they watched the whole interview. And I'd be staggered if there wasn't, because when you hear him talking about everything in context, I think you just get a feeling of a guy who's, when he was last at United, it was a brilliantly run club. 
one of the best in the world, with a brilliant manager, the greatest of all time, Sir Alex Ferguson. And from top to bottom, he loved David Gill, he loved the people that ran the club. He felt it was a world-class place to play football. And then he went away for nine years to Real Madrid, three years to Juventus. And those were both huge clubs who he said evolved every year. Every year, the latest new technology, latest diet, latest training yeah. techniques, all yeah. these things. And he went back to Manchester United, and he found it basically stuck in the dark ages. It hadn't moved on at all. So from that revelation onwards, you know, a few days into, into going back, he realized that this club was going nowhere fast. Okay. Um, Piers, you, you probably heard Simon. Simon Jordan is with me. Of course he is. Uh, you described it as a whine-a-thon. I, no, I described it in context with the words that Piers Morgan used to describe the interview that Prince Harry and Prince and, and Meghan did with Oprah Winfrey. And I, can, I consider this interview to be the sports, sports version of it. To me, it's an interview that is done between two people that know one another very well. It's a very comfortable interview and nothing is really challenged. Um, if the interview set up, I've, I think obviously one would accept there's only a few people in the world that could get that interview. For me, trying to understand the situation, I listened to an interview where very little was challenged. It was accepted at face value, nothing was pushed back on, and it was evaluated from the perspective of an, of an admiring set of eyes sitting across the desk from him. What would you say to that, Piers? Well, I, I wasn't aware that Simon Jordan... I mean, look, apart, apart from anything else, I was very shocked to discover yesterday that Simon had actually tweeted that he agreed with me about something. So I agree with you about a lot of things, Piers, but that's but also into, got to do with what new, I just said. We're heading into new territory. No, I, look, look, I'm always happy to take interviewing technique advice from Simon. I, I wasn't giving you interviewing technique advice. I was just, one, give, I was one, just giving you an example one, of what one, I felt the interview was. One, that's what one, I was asked. Part of the world's... No, no, if you, if you let me respond, I'm always happy to take interview lectures from people, particularly those who've never interviewed people. Um, Not a lecture, Piers. It's an observation. If I could just finish my sentence, uh, I, I did challenge him, which is why I got him to admit he shouldn't have done what he did at Tottenham. I got him to make other admissions too. I'm not quite sure what you mean by challenging because well, he was setting the record do, straight over stuff that had been misleading. Well, I can give you an example if, if you want. I can give yeah. you examples of what I mean Indoor. by challenging because Indoor. I'm not giving you a lecture. I was asked for an opinion upon how you conducted well, an give, interview. Give me an well, example. Give an example. Just and, one example. And, and an example would be if, if the argument about executives that didn't want him from the year before, didn't want him now, who yeah. would these executives be? Because he's, by admission, he's never spoken to the Glazers. Are we talking about Edward Wood? Are we I've talking just about... Told you. No, no, well, just no, told you didn't. You, you, you told me that it's an easy supposition to make. So let me finish, because I, I hadn't finished. I'll let you finish. The yeah. scenario for me sitting there, listening, listen, looking back and looking at the interview that you did and watching it as a former football club owner, thinking, how would this situation manifest itself? Elite player has a problem with the football club, alludes to the fact that this problem starts from people not wanting him a year ago. When mm -hmm. the whole world knew that he was a red carpet was rolled out for him, who were these executives? Given the fact that Ed Woodward's no longer in the business, so was it him? Was it Richard Arnold, who allegedly has made phone calls to uh, Ronaldo, suggesting that whatever time he needs, he can have? Who were these executives? Mm. He'd never met the Glazers. He talked about the Glazers' motivation. How does he know the Glazers' mo motivation if he's never spoken to them? Well, I would say to that that if there are senior executives running Manchester United, who wish to deny on the record anything Ronaldo has said, let them come forward. But I don't care what you deny. would say, Piers. I wanted to hear what he would say. Well, he named. He said it was. Senior no, he didn't name anybody. The company in the, sa in the same way. <laughs> right, so in the want, same way. In want... the same way that you asked for for Meghan Markle to name the yeah. racists in the royal family. Why wouldn't yeah. you ask Ronaldo to name explicitly and specifically yeah. who he was referring to? I think. I think if you go back and watch the interview, I did. You will see that. You will see that he names titles of people. Well, there's at the no club. president, Piers. There's no president in the football well, club. There isn't a role they, in the football club for a should, president. Should, should we presume he's Piers talking is about talking the about the, the? He's talking about the. He's talking about the people who run. Yeah. Manchester should United. should we presume Piers is talking about the chief executive of Richard Arnold? I would think so. Yeah. Well, he described them separately. Likely, he described directors and the president. So well, a president is one out. thing, Piers, which isn't let the role inside a football club, and I'd assume you would know that. And the other yeah. part of it is directors. So if we're going to deal in detail, let's deal in detail. Let's look at right, the pushback. Think... Let's push back on the idea right. that someone was going to spend £350 million pounds or euros on signing mm. him on a contract, and where and Manchester way, United might be in the equation, where Man United way, offered an opportunity to buy the way, sell him. By the way, you're, talk you're talking complete nonsense about the Saudi deal as well, because I know exactly who made that deal, and I know that figure is true. So I heard you earlier saying you don't believe it. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> so, um, you know, we can all split hairs so, about So you've it. seen a contract from the Saudis, have you? I've actually spoken to the Saudi person who made the offer myself. But you've seen the contract, have you? I've, unless the person's well, the lying to me. The answer would be no, me, then, right? So you haven't seen a contract. They, why would they lie? 
Be- oh, Piers, okay. I don't know, mate. Why would people? Why would people misrepresent things? You do that regularly. So, so Piers, it, no, no doubt right. you, you'll have spoken to Cristiano uh, off camera, and I always yeah. know after something like that when the dust settles that we, you know, wow, yeah. yeah, you're happy with everything you said. Yep, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Did he say to you? Can you let us in on this? Has he said to you whether he thinks he can go back to United or not? Well, I think he looked. I think he was clear when he did the interview that it was a very incendiary interview, and we'll have to see what happens. Manchester United say now they're going to take action, and he'll deal with any fallout that comes. All I can say is I've been speaking to him regularly this week. He was fully aware of everything that I was going to write and say and put in the interview on television, and he's very comfortable about everything that's gone out there and the reaction. He knew it would inspire a lot of reaction. Yeah. And yeah, we, we, and, and so I, I think if people look at the interview in totality, what are you left with? You're left with a guy who feels completely disrespected, who was last season the player of the season for Manchester United, and he wants to play at the highest level, which is admirable for a guy at 37 to still want to challenge himself at the very highest level and keep breaking records, keep scoring goals in the big tournaments, keep winning big trophies. He doesn't feel that can happen at Manchester United. And frankly, given where United are at the moment, I think he's right. But again, I go back to the point, Piers, because you had a wonderful opportunity and only a few people in the world. And by the way, I agree with a lot of things you say. And the reason why I tweeted something about the interview you did with Emily Matlis is because I agree with a lot of things you say. I don't make pure yeah. comments like you do about your observations about being a failed football club or owner or other points you felt you needed to make on Twitter about me. But the point is, is that the Ten Hag scenario where you had an opportunity, because as a former owner, I look at it and say, why in God's name would a manager that's come into a football club that publicly announced from the get-go that Ronaldo was part of his plans, why would he suddenly want to take this player down? And you never asked him once that question. You never asked him his uh, perception honestly, of I'm why sorry, Ten Hag would go just, after him that if way. If I could get... OK, can I just say, I do think you're talking complete nonsense. This interview, over 90 minutes, has made more headlines than any Yeah, but why am I talking sport? nonsense, Piers? What's nonsense say, about not I, understanding the dynamic? Just, if I could just finish... It has made more headlines around the world than any sporting interview I can ever remember. Right. The reason it's made headline, if I could just finish, well, go on, the then. reason it's made, if I could finish, the reason it's made so many headlines is because it was revelatory. The reason it was revelatory was because Ronaldo was the one who was correcting the record. Ronaldo was doing what I suspect some of the royal family would love to have done on the record after the Meghan and Harry Winathon, where they accused the royal family of being callous racists, uh, but they weren't allowed to. Ronaldo's not in that position. But he you slaughtered responded. Oprah Winfrey I, for adopting the same no, style that you but did. You're, but you're getting the chicken and the egg the wrong way around. Ronaldo is responding to all the stuff that's been in the papers and on broadcast. He is reacting to it. He's not the one precipitating this. He is the one correcting all the smears and lies about him in the last few months, of which there have been many. So my job was to facilitate him setting the record straight as he saw it. Now, if anyone at Manchester United wants to come back on the record from Richard Arnold down and deny specific allegations that Ronaldo's made against the club and the senior executives... And that's fine, please, and that would be 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 great for you. But my observation about you is that you were incredibly critical about the style of interviewing that was deployed by Oprah Winfrey in the advertorial... Uh. Hang on, I haven't finished, Piers. In the advertorial that was put forward by them, you did precisely the same thing. You sat no, there I did, I with, did, with goldfish it, eyeballs about, looking across honestly, the table yeah. at someone you I'm deeply admire funny, you and about, you had no I'm constructive objectivity. I'm not very funny, but you, you yourself are now sounding very puerile and childish because there's no comparison between the two things. Well, and there you is, know Piers. And you, there, there is. There is. Piers, Piers, let me just just jump in here. They were lighting the fire. Piers, a man you know well and have huge respect for, is sitting to my left. Arsenal Invincible, Martin Keown is with us. And Martin, you've got your own take on it. Uh, Martin, what do you want to say to Piers? Piers, Yeah, I I mean, I thought it was very compelling. I would like to add, I haven't been able to with all the... To watch it? All of it. I've watched uh, enough of it, first 40 minutes, and I thought it was compelling. Um, I do feel that he's offering everything to you. I don't feel there's an issue with the, the, with the question. Uh-huh. I think Simon is nitpicking as, as usual. Um, oh, cool. And, uh, yeah, oh, but do, I, do do feel, I do feel, though, it's very sad. I do feel it's very sad in this modern... And maybe this is a, a sign of the times to come in the future mm. that players sort of make these uh, announcements. He worked under an outstanding manager in Sir Alex Ferguson and one of the values he would have picked up was to keep everything in-house. And that disappoints me most. And I think the players will look at this. He has to go public. I know that you're glowing in sort of the afterburners of, of getting this interview, but 
you must have been shocked, really, that he wanted. Can you imagine 20 years ago, 15 years, a player comes forward to offer up Actually, to I, you? I wasn't, well, to be, to be honest, Martin, I wasn't shocked because I've been in constant contact with him okay. this year uh, over things professional and personal that have happened to him. And I've, I've known he's wanted to speak out. And again, I come back to people like Gary Neville, United Club Legends, urging him to speak out publicly back in August, but now he does, they criticise him. It's that kind of double standard about what people have viewed about this interview. Look, Ronaldo feels, I think, very relieved that he's got it all out there the way he wanted to get it out there. Like I say, if anybody wants to challenge him on the veracity of some very you know, serious allegations he's made, not least that people running Manchester United did not believe his word when he said his daughter was in hospital let them go on the record and deny it yeah, yeah. i'd like to hear that well that's but, right i mean it appears i think that will be the next step in in in, in the process wasn't it because united are saying yeah. this morning they've initiated appropriate steps in response to ronaldo's recent media interview pierce let mm-hmm. me ask you this finally we've kept you long enough thanks for joining us but let me ask you this finally uh, and i'll phrase it this way D- do you think this interview with your good self is going to prove to be the end of Ronaldo's Manchester United career? I would think probably, yeah. I think that it doesn't take a genius to work out. They've probably reached an irreparable stage, and that's why he did the interview. Um, but, you know, his heart has been at Manchester United for a very long time since he was an 18-year-old. And he, he doesn't feel happy about any of this. He feels like at the end of his tether about it. But I think, you know, Ronaldo's a very smart guy, and he didn't do this casually on a whim he thought about this for quite a long time and he decided this was the right time to speak out and to have his say and he's perfectly perfectly aware that other people may want to come out and have their say as Wayne Rooney has today Gary Neville did yesterday Manchester United will now but again I simply say he's dropped a lot of truth bombs here as far as I'm concerned let's see if anybody wants to challenge the truth that he's put out there and if they do Fair enough. He'll take that. But I believe Ronaldo. And I think that uh, many Manchester United fans would be better served to themselves and their club to listen to his critique of the club and understand that when someone of this stature says that Manchester United has gone nowhere in the last 12 years, they should take that very seriously and they should wonder why. Who's your, who's your next uh, individual in the hot seat? You're going to try for one of the Glazers? I tried very unsuccessfully well, funny enough, funny one enough, night I, in Manchester as uh, they brushed by me. Well, funny enough, I had a um, had a little Twitter exchange today with Elon Musk, um, so I think he might be number one. I, I tweeted that if all, there's this ridiculous hashtag RIP Twitter going around, which is all these whining people saying that Twitter's obviously going to die now because the world's richest, most successful businessman now owns it. And Simon I think, wasn't course, on that list but, then, Pierce. No. <laughs> that's a good, no, it's a good point. Pierce. But I, uh, I, I, I tweeted it would be great if everyone whining about the death of Twitter since Elon Musk bought it, I, I copied in his handle, uh, could just quit Twitter. That would be great. It would spare us all the whining. <laughs> and, he, and he replied, seriously, which is the first interaction I've actually had with the, uh, with the great man on Twitter. So, yeah, I would love to interview Elon Musk next. Why not? Excellent. Pierce, you're always uh, welcome on this show. Thank you so much for joining us. Good fun. It's thank a great you. show, lads, and I, I enjoy the debate. I was listening to it uh, before you even texted me, so thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Piers Morgan Thanks with me. us live in the show this morning. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.